Yeah, I think that there's um, there's obviously a very good case for being a pessimist, but also I think there's a good case for being an optimist. Essentially, I think this is a great reset for uh, how we've done things until now. I mean, for example, you can see that the issue of solidarity and helping each other and creating a sustainable system and putting resources in the right place like healthcare, you know, this has become a very big issue. Uh, and you can see that solidarity is now becoming something that people are discovering how important that is, you know, that we help each other. Uh, and that has been a very good momentum. So, you know, Germany has been sending gas, has been sending mass to Italy and, and there's lots of unsolidarity also, you know, yeah. of course, you know, like most Germany does not want the Euro bonds, you know, I think they're a good idea. But, you know, it's forcing us to collaborate, right? So basically, I think the learning from the crisis, like any crisis, is uh, if we don't collaborate, we are in deep shit, right? Uh, you cannot collaborate. Let's say you can do the thing that Iran is doing or Turkey or the U.S., and you can say it's a Chinese virus, you know, but you will not be successful in protecting your population. Uh, and you will not be successful in creating a new economy, right? So it's like a polarization. There's many countries who are saying, let's collaborate, let's make it sustainable. And then there's uh, autocrat countries like Israel um, and Iran, you know, who are using the crisis as an excuse of, uh, you know, clamming down on people and tracking people and doing generally bad things, you know? Uh, and of course, there's China who's saying, you know what, uh, Americans are stupid we can help you. Okay? Um, but I think the positive thing is it's, it's, it's forcing us to see what is important. Right? Uh, and what is important is collective wellness, you know, so that we have a, a system that covers everybody. You can see what's happening in America right now. It's, it's, yeah, it could almost be a civil war in America if we're not careful. Right? Uh, but, you know, you, you can never underestimate Americans because of their ingenuity, you know. Uh, <laughs> they can always invent something, you know. Uh, but you see the countries that have not collaborated, they are not doing good, right? Uh, for example, here in Switzerland, you know, we are voluntarily doing many things. The state has put 100 billion Swiss francs into supporting economy. We have huge infrastructure with hospitals. Yeah, we're a rich country. But you can see, of course, the same Germany is very low numbers of fatalities. The worst countries, England, right? Healthcare, America, between 200,000 and 2 million people will die. Brazil, right? Yeah. Nigeria. Uh, and once again, this is the other thing, the poor people suffer the most. Right? Because they don't have the luxury of... Uh, seclusion. They don't have medical services. They don't have infrastructure. So there are many learnings from the crisis. I think we're going to come to a point where people say, you know, what's important to us in the future? We're going to have more crises, more pandemics. That is clearly going to. So trillions of euros into healthcare, right? Preparedness, right? Probably a, a, a kind of tax for for the, for preparedness we also need to prepare, be prepared for climate change same problem right? so now the corona crisis is a very good test case for the climate change right? if we are serious about uh, addressing climate change we have to make some real changes like re like real changes right? mm -hmm. you know we are finding out now that it's really important to connect to people right? We cannot connect in person, so we connect like this. And we're all becoming an expert in working remotely, right? buying equipment, doing online conferences, and we're finding out that it has value. You know? uh, that technology is a fantastic tool, but it does not replace the personal contact. You know? it, it is just another way of an, a solution. You know? So like, you know, we, it's like dating. You know, I always say like when you do dating on Tinder, it's a solution. Right? When you do dating as a person in a bar with friends, it's different. That doesn't mean Tinder is bad, it's just different, right? Uh, and so I think what we're seeing now is that this becomes the new normal to work from home, to work remotely. Well, you know, for traditional countries, and I think uh, Portugal is a very traditional country, just like Switzerland, uh, this is a very, very big challenge, right? 
because people use technology, but they're not really like friendly with it, like Americans, you know? I mean, every American will say within two weeks, I'm going to learn some other tool, you know, very, you know, the Anglo-American world, right? Yeah. Uh, in Portugal, they use a mobile phone, they use it, but they're not really like adapting very quickly, like, just like here. And now we are forced to learn how all that works. And I think the really good thing is that education, training, universities, after this crisis, they will know what to do, right? And that's, that's going to change everything because all of a sudden the professor knows how, the, how he looks on, on video, right? And he knows how he presents differently. Right? And that's a huge boost. I think it will open up the possibilities. We're going to allow online degrees. We're going to allow uh, social credits being insured by working from home. We're going to have to address the freelance workers, the gig economy, right? And all these things will start to move. Like, like now, for example, it's totally legal to do a yoga class from home. A and you get credits, like, like if you go there. Right? And I think that's going to change everything. And especially in, in countries like Portugal, where you have high level of internet, but very traditional use of, uh, and also very traditional process of communication that opens up a whole new possibility, right? And also, the governments that are not going to support the population, that are not doing the right thing, they will get kicked out, right? And this is the moment of young people and women, like in New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern, and in Finland, uh, Sunny Mar Marina, uh, and many other places, they are the ones doing the right thing, and the, the politicians that don't understand technology and that don't understand what the public needs, like US, right? You never know what happens next in the US. It's such a corrupt nightmare. Uh, but in most countries in Europe, if, if this is the moment where you have to prove that you are a leader, right? Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise you're gone. We have what I call the great transformation, right? Uh, some people call this a great depression, like another depression, and it, it is, right? I mean, it's fundamentally a total loss of GDP of 30% or so for this year, right? Like mind-boggling, right? Worse, worse than September 11th, the banking crash, and even World War II, right? So uh, the impact is fundamental. I think what's happening now is that we're shifting into a new kind of... Uh, economic thinking. So if we just think about profit and growth, that was before Corona, right? And, you know, there's a life before Corona and there's a life after Corona. <laughs> and, and after Corona, we're going to say, well, you know, what's important is uh, people, planet, prosperity, and purpose, right? What I call the, the quadruple bottom line, you know, the millennial development goals in a larger way. But so the economic system has support, has to support people, which means healthcare, right? We're going to put trillions of euros into healthcare and we're going to take it away from weapons uh, and the oil industry, okay? Because everybody is going to say, yeah, this should not happen again. I think Portugal is not in a bad place but some other European countries like France or Italy, uh, yeah, or Spain, right? bad, they're in a bad place because of unpreparedness and lack of funding. So we're gonna put a lot more money into healthcare, into social security, social work, right? into well-being for the citizens. So I think our, our definition of capitalism will go larger right? uh, as a result, because we find out this is the best possible answer to uh, two very large problems, right? And this is not the only problem. You know, right now, the corona problem is like one hundredth of the climate change problem. Like Switzerland is supporting independent business by saying that you get a grant for six months to reposition, right? Um, I'm also for a negative income tax, which is kind of like this, right? So if you don't make enough money as a, you get a bonus for having tried it, right? And I think what's even more interesting is to say that the state can eventually cover your basic needs rather than giving you money. It's the housing, the food, electricity, internet that is just there, you know. Um, th there's many business models, I think, that we're going to see that the state has to do. But the problem is that in Europe, you know, we have uh, collective capitalism, 
you know yeah uh, we have social capitalism right? and this is the only solution for the future because the corporate capitalism that you have in america uh, is unsustainable and destructive right and it creates and it, it creates terrorism it creates yeah and then you have the state capitalism in china yeah you know that is sustainable but it's completely repressive right so i think europe has the answer in social capitalism and this is the moment where europe can say you know we are going to stand together and we're going to find a way uh and i think it takes country like countries like portugal um to show how that can be done together in a sort of southern european way right um because you know if you look at the 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 truth of it spain is not doing it italy is not doing it greece is nowhere to be seen uh, france has their own bubble uh yeah switzerland is not europe and yeah so that is portugal as a as a way of showing and portugal has long positioned as the uh sort of the way of doing things differently like in technology and i think yeah. next what's happening with technology is quite clearly technology is the savior now right yeah uh, technology industries are they're winning in this right technology is everything now i mean we're using zoom right and and zoom shares have exploded so after the crisis we're going to be quite busy trying to regulate technology to do the right thing like security right um and to have a public agenda because technology right now cannot be touched because it's so so important right um but then then the biggest problem that i think we're going to have is that we get too dependent and also we have surveillance like in israel where uh, every mobile phone is being tracked now by the by the shin bet yeah. the internal police you know and and that is just basically undemocratic uh emergency stuff you know that should not be the new normal uh, so finding that balance yeah it's going to be that's going to be a challenge i i think we have to look at the least the least bad solution right not the best possible solution but the least bad solution okay and this is what europe is the european commission is the least of the bad right <laughs> it is it is not it's not really good uh, uh, but imagine if you know if we didn't have the commission and we didn't have the bureaucracy and we didn't have you know and we didn't have those issues it's like a large family right you can have an autocrat and everybody else can go away right or you have and, and then you have more discussions so i think what we have now is a system to where we're saying uh, in order for europe to survive we have to have a common market right uh, we have to have a common strategy that's water food security common army common currency uh we have to work together to support each other like a, a large country that sends money like switzerland you know we have the cantons are very independent and then we have a federation and now the federation has to put up 100 billion francs to help the cantons with their businesses right? that's called solidarity and if the europe if, if the germans don't show solidarity then they're, they're creating a huge problem by people saying that you know they this is not an approach that we can live together as a family so to speak but our only chance for the future is to unite because ultimately it's north america off to i don't know where so, uh, we don't know china right and and the rest of the world is basically just china and then there's europe and america right and, and if we don't unite we don't have the chance to do the things that we need to do uh, which is people plan that prosper prosperity purpose right and europe as a whole is a uh, human uh, hum uh, humanistic society right yeah. with collective goals and we're the only place in the world where we can say that we can together push this agenda right um and this is very important i think uh, so no matter what the difficulties are the the, the alternative would be a total disaster uh, it's a question of philosophy you know our philosophy in europe is that we want a strong collective society so that's why we pay taxes you know you pay 47 percent taxes in, in denmark 30 percent here and the, the same in portugal and that's why we set priorities to live in a world that we want to live in you know a world that is not polarized like america and a world that's not a central authority like china right and we make those choices and and so um when you have a lot of tradition like you have in europe there are many discussions and problems right 
but but face the reality like if we were able to combine our research as we have already been doing our, our scientific research our armies right we could save like 15 billion a trillion euro, euros right uh our cyber security and now i think the you know if you look at the next wave of challenges okay more pandemic that is coming right because of the way that we're uh, genetic engineering right who is going to say what is okay and what is not right artificial intelligence right? the work right? the future of food energy right? and on top of that climate change which means if we don't take dramatic action we're going to have 300 million climate refugees coming to europe right <laughs> All right. So, I mean, basically it's forcing us to say, let's forget about all the stuff we talked about, like, you know, uh, uh, the minor things. And this is what's happening in a crisis. In a crisis, it comes down to the bottom line, right? Because everything else is not important. It's survival and, and transformation, right? And that's the good thing about the crisis. We are finally saying, you know what, that's true, but there's more important considerations now. You know, for example, what are we going to do about climate change in Europe? Um, and how are we going to implement the things that we should implement without seeing the catastrophe first, right? Uh, so this is coming right next year. You know, I, I think we're seeing right now, it is possible to save on energy. Oil is not important, right? The oil price is declining. We're going to new forms of energy. So I think it's the mindset of people is changing by saying, you know, what is important and why do we need to collaborate? Right? 